What's up guys, this is HyrockDHS, and I'm going to start a series in Out of the Park Baseball 19, Rebuilding a Team. Throughout this series, I'll not only rebuild the team, but hopefully use it to create a good guide on how to play Out of the Park, especially leading into Out of the Park 20 in March. The first step is choosing a team. Since this is based off of the rosters from the 2018 season, the rosters and rebuilding teams will change in Out of the Park 20, but to identify good rebuilding targets, the same rules will apply. We can break down teams into four different groups. Teams in a championship window, teams about to enter a championship window, retooling teams, rebuilding teams. For the teams in a championship window, we can take out the Red Sox, Indians, Astros, Angels, Twins, Yankees, Diamondbacks, Cubs, Rockies, Dodgers, Brewers, Cardinals, and Nationals. Teams about to enter a championship window includes teams like the White Sox, Braves, Reds, Phillies, and Padres, who have spent the last few years heavily tanking, but the prospects are reaching the majors, and the farm system is so stacked that you can't truly rebuild this team from the ground up. I'm also including teams like the A's and Mets, which have been trying to contend, really aren't missing anything big, and could compete if everyone performs. This leaves us with the last 10 teams, the retooling teams and the rebuilding teams. A retooling team is a team that has a lot of pieces but isn't going to contend this year, so they choose to try to give up on the season and sell off short-term pieces to get prospects. These are teams that should finish in third or fourth in the division and are usually just missing a piece or two from a championship team. The Yankees did this in 2016, picking up Aroldis Chapman from the discount bin, flipping him to the Cubs at the deadline to restock the farm system, and then re-signed him in the offseason. They then were in contention again in 2017, and were even one win away from the World Series. A rebuilding team is a team that has little or no chance of competing not just this year, but for a few years. These teams are looking to trade anything of value. The best example of this is obviously the Marlins, who sold off Giancarlo Stanton, Marcelo Zuna, and Christian Yelich last offseason, trading away their top three players who all had multiple years of club control. These teams usually embrace losing a lot of games to get high draft picks. Our retooling teams are the Mariners, the Rays, the Pirates, and the Giants. Our rebuilding teams are the Orioles, the Tigers, the Royals, the Rangers, the Blue Jays, and the Marlins. The Mariners are in an odd position. They haven't made the playoffs since 2001 when they set the record for regular season wins before flaming out in the ALCS. The team has some really solid pieces in Robinson Cano, Kyle Seeger, Mike Zanino, D. Gordon, Nelson Cruz, and James Paxton. Edwin Diaz has the potential to be the best closer in the league, and King Felix is still a force to be reckoned with. But being in the AL West, they're clearly not as good as the Astros, and the division is actually really competitive. While you could make an argument that they should be in the first two groups, I just don't see this team contending as is. I think if they try to get some talent back for their short-term players, they could really contend within one to two years. If there's any amount of injuries, or God forbid Cano gets the suspension in game somehow, fully embrace the tank this year and retool for 2020. The Mariners start with the 27th ranked farm system in the game, with only right-handed pitcher Sam Carlson ranked in the top 100. As a 19-year-old still in rookie ball, don't anticipate him helping anytime soon. Don't count on any real help in the next couple of years from within. You'll probably have to bring in some talent from outside the organization. And with Jerry DePito's knack for trading anything with a trade value for something worse, there's not much to trade here. The owner is somewhat demanding, but you should be pretty autonomous and able to achieve your goals. The biggest problem with the Mariners over the past few years has been GMs, so you'll shore up that weakness just by taking over. This would be an interesting retool that could see you contending this year, if everything goes right. But I think it's a better idea to flip some players to restock the farm system and try to contend again in one to two more years. I've always had a soft spot for the Rays because they just sort of somehow stay okay. Part of it is that they cannot sustain a high payroll 
which has forced them to sell off players like fan favorite Evan Longoria when they start getting expensive. This team has pretty solid talent between Chris Archer, Blake Snell, Alex Colomb, Wilson Ramos, Matt Duffy, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Malik Smith. But even looking at the talent compared to the Mariners, it's pretty barren. A lot of middling to slightly below average players. They do have some good players in the minors with Willie Adams, Jake Bowers, and Brendan McKay in the upper minors. Don't forget about Brett Honeywell. He will miss this season to Tommy Johns, but should be ready to make his debut in 2019. This system is ranked as number three overall, but isn't very deep beyond three prospects in the top 20. As I alluded to earlier, the Rays have been in a payroll bind for pretty much their entire lifespan, and that goes back to ownership. The owner is pretty notorious in real life for being a miser, and their simulated budget for 2017 was under $100 million. This will limit you if you have a bunch of players getting expensive at the same time, so if you want a challenge of building around a limited budget, the Rays would be a good option. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. In 2015, the NL Central had three teams make the postseason with more wins than the top AL team, and the Pirates were second in that division with 98 wins. Unfortunately, that was the last time they made the postseason. They've traded away team icons Andrew McCutcheon and Garrett Cole for prospects in an attempt to retool, making sure they get players who are at or near the major league level to hopefully let 2018 be a lull in a championship window rather than a full-on rebuild. The Pirates have some decent players on their roster with Jameson Tyone, Michael Feliz, Felipe Vasquez, Josh Harrison, Corey Dickerson, Sterling Marte, and Gregory Polanco. There's some pretty good candidates for having renaissance seasons like Colin Moran, Francisco Cervelli, and Tyler Glasnow. They do have the 11th best farm system, highlighted by right-handed pitchers Mitch Keller and Shane Baz, as well as center fielder Austin Meadows. Meadows is also at AAA, so he should be up to fortify that solid outfield soon. Looking at this team, it could be decent this year, and you could almost make an argument to try and contend. Unfortunately, they may be in the deepest division in the NL Central. The Brewers, Cardinals, and Cubs are all trying to contend. The Cubs are in the middle of a potential dynasty, while the Brewers have made it clear they intend to start theirs this season. The Cardinals are a really solid a team, a much better team than the Pirates. A lot of Pirates fans will complain about how management only cares about the bottom line, and it shows in the owner. Robert Nutting is a penny pincher, but he also has a tolerant patience level, indicating he's willing to do a lot of losing as long as he's making money. They did have a predicted budget around $120 million last season, but it does go down in 2018. This would be a good option for anyone who wants a chance to cash in on some short-term assets to try and retool, and can also extend the players they want to build around. The budget should pick up again once the team gets good, but maybe not as much as some other teams. I hate to start off two segments the same way, but my god this fall was absolutely brutal. The Giants won three World Series from 2010 to 2014. They made the playoffs as a wildcard team in 2016, and then fell to the worst record in 2017. And due to tying the Tigers, they don't even get the first pick in the draft. The Giants are probably the best team of the retooling teams. Buster Posey can still argue that he's the best catcher in the game. They added the best player from the last two retooling teams in Evan Longoria and Andrew McCutcheon in the offseason adding to a core that included Brandon Belt and Brandon Crawford. Throw in solid pitching from Johnny Cueto, Madison Bumgarner, and Jeff Samarja, and this team would have a chance at competing this year. However, it all falls apart soon. McCutcheon is a free agent at the end of the season, and Bumgarner is gone after 2019. In addition, McCutcheon, Longoria, Cueto, and Samarja are all shadows of their former selves. Still good pieces, but not superstars. Anything going wrong means the end of the season, most likely. There's also not a lot in the system. The farm is ranked 26th in the majors, with the only top 100 prospect right fielder Helio Ramos still in short season A-ball. The Giants probably have the best owner of the four retooling teams. You'll get a long leash without much interference. Lawrence Baer has an economizer for fiscal personality, but the team regularly runs near the luxury tax threshold. So spending shouldn't be a problem once you're relevant again. This team has a fairly short window to contend soon, but with a good position in the draft, you can add a bunch of talent to this farm system immediately. Now we get to the rebuilding teams. These teams have no shot at competing this year and probably won't contend anytime soon. If they have solid prospects, they aren't near the majors. These are teams that you can truly make your own if you're willing and can survive the Dark Ages. 
Okay, we have the benefit of hindsight right now. We know how this season ends for the Orioles, but they don't. If you choose the Orioles, they probably won't go 47 and 115. But with Britton Hurt and that lineup absolutely useless outside Machado, it's not looking good. Stack that with the 29th ranked farm system, and you're going to suck for a long time. Don't expect to get back what the Dodgers paid for Machado. The AI doesn't usually accept trades like that. But you can still get a really good start on rebuilding this team by trading him. Also, don't neglect the international market like your counterpart has over the past two seasons. Because this is starting at the beginning of the 2018 season, we don't have the number one pick in the draft this year. In fact, because Baltimore was trying to contend up until now, the Orioles get to pick 11th this season. Better than a lot of teams on this list, actually. They also have a supplemental pick after the first round. In addition to all of this, look up Chris Davis. That's C-H-R-I-S, not K-H-R-I-S. That's a different guy. Congratulations, you owe him $115 million over the next five years. A left-handed, defensively limited, slugger who strikes out in an unprecedented clip. Not only are these a dime a dozen on the free agent market right now, they have a notorious regression curve and he's in the middle of it. Owner Peter Angelos has middling fiscal expectations, but is kind of demanding on the patient's front. He's still in win now mode, so that can make it pretty hard to justify tearing it down to embrace the tank. They do keep a pretty high payroll, so you won't have to worry about not keeping players when you do finally contend. Angelos is 88, so it's entirely possible that he's not the owner very long anyway, which could really change this rebuild. Start by trading Machado and get that farm system going. Embrace the tank. You're going to need the best picks you can get. Okay, so I know I just spent a lot of time talking about the Chris Davis contract, but the Miguel Cabrera one is actually longer and more expensive. Seriously, you're paying him through 2025. At least he's a future Hall of Famer. This team is going to be bad this season. They were the worst team in 2017, and for their efforts, you'll get the first overall pick this season. Whether you follow the actual Tigers' footsteps and take Casey Mize is up to you. There's no such thing as a surefire can't-miss prospect either, so make sure you do your research and take the player you like best. Unlike the Orioles, there's no one on this team you you can really flip for prospects. No one is going to take Jordan Zimmerman's contract and don't even try to trade Cabrera. Unless you think Mikey Maddock is a good trade candidate, there's no jump starting this rebuild through trades. At least you don't need it as badly as the Orioles. The farm system is ranked 17th with four in the top 100. Franklin Perez is at double A, so he could be here in a couple of years. I already mentioned a couple of contracts from this team, but it's really important to take note of the salaries they have. The projected payroll is around 123 million, but they have 18 million in Victor Martinez coming off the book after this season. There's $24 million to Zimmerman this season and $25 million in 2019 and 2020. Cabrera is probably the biggest barrier you will have to success in this run. The team has typically run with a pretty large payroll while contending over the past decade and a half, with Christopher Illich having understanding patience. With above average market size, fan interest, and fan loyalty, you can expect to be able to spend in years to come once the team is in a good state. Okay, we're going to have to take a short break while I go cry in the corner. Okay, I'm, I'm better now. This team is in an awful spot. Almost no major league talent to speak of outside Danny Duffy, Whit Merrifield, Mike Moustakas, and Jorge Soler, and the absolute worst farm system in the game. At least Adalberto Mondesi isn't a top prospect because he has too many at-bats. While the Royals don't get a pick in the top half of the draft, they do have four first-round picks. The 18th as normal based on where they finished last season, and then three in the supplemental draft. Because of this, they have a very large draft bonus pool. With as many picks as you'll have and the ability to trade Mike Moustakas, Stockus, Lucas Duda, John Jay, and Kelvin Herrera, you can get a head start on restocking this farm system. You could also potentially trade Brandon Maurer and Jason Hamill if they have good seasons. If Alex Gordon has a good 2018, there's a possibility he could be traded in the offseason as well. This team is also going to be bad. The Royals just lack a lot of talent at the major league level. While this will allow you to get looks at players you like, this means you'll probably have a pretty poor showing this season. It's a coin flip to see whether you'll beat the Royals 58 and 104 record. Unlike the previous two teams, the Royals do not typically carry a high payroll. They still have good fan loyalty and fan interest, which should buy you a little bit of budget. Unfortunately, a lot of payroll is tied up in Alex Gordon, Ian Kennedy, Danny Duffy, and Salvador Perez. Players like Herrera, Moustakas, Duda, and Jay will come off the books after this season. And so will Hamill if you decline his option. David Glass is a petty pincher, but he does give you a little bit of patience. This would be a good traditional rebuild candidate without too many constraints, as most of the players with long contracts aren't stupid expensive and they could be at least competent players. It's likely you'll get a little bit more money to spend once you get the team back on track. 
After being a strike away from the title in 2011, the Rangers' biggest highlight since then has been rough and door punching Jose Bautista. Trading Ian Kinsler for Prince Fielder didn't help, but they actually don't have a lot of long-term contracts. And the ones they do have are for young players and have fairly low costs. Even Elvin Andrus' cost only gets up to $15 million, but it is through 2023. The problem is they don't have a lot of other talent on this roster. Cole Hamels is a good, not great starter at this stage in his career. Matt Moore, Mike Miner, and Jesse Chavez are still reclamation projects at this point. On the position player side, Adrian Beltre is a future Hall of Famer, but he's 38 in the last year of his deal and he will likely retire at season's end. Joey Gallo, Ruffnet Odor, and Jurickson Profar have decent upsides, but Gallo could be the first person ever to end a career with more home runs than singles. Willie Calhoun is in AAA but could easily be in the majors by the end of the season. The farm isn't as barren as some teams on this list. They have the 20th ranked system in the league and don't have any huge problem contracts. Your only first round pick this year is 15th overall, and there's no supplemental picks. There's also very few pieces you can trade for solid prospects. The owner is patient and charitable, so when you're competing again, you should be able to spend the money to keep or acquire pieces you want. However, the owner is also in win-now mode, so he probably wouldn't accept a sudden selling off of all assets to fuel the rebuild. This makes a Rangers rebuild a little bit more challenging, as your owner does not have the same mindset as you do about the state of the team. This is the second AL East team that probably should have torn it down after 2017. They don't have a lot of pieces anymore now that Bautista and Encarnacion are gone, and they don't have a lot to work with on the offense. The pitching is at best a middling group. Time to tear it down, boys. On the active roster, you have Marcus Stroman, who is still controlled through 2020 by arbitration, and will be a solid option throughout that time frame. Josh Donaldson will be a great piece to flip at the deadline, as will J.A. Happ and Marco Estrada. Steve Pierce, John Axford, Tyler Clippert, and Curtis Granderson could play their way into being trade chips as well. A lot of the other players are unproven or mediocre. The prospects are pretty good and they're close. Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. are both close to the majors starting the season at AA and Anthony Alford is starting the season at AAA. They should be ready by 2019 at the latest unless they fall off course. Overall, the system is ranked fourth in the majors, the best of the rebuilding candidates. Unfortunately, the only three players they have in the top 100 are those three. So the farm isn't really too deep, just top heavy. With the Blue Jays, you have one of the largest markets in the game. However, your owner is a demanding owner, so if he decides to give you goals to do well in 2018, you may struggle to keep your job. They do tend to carry a higher payroll and budget, so you shouldn't have problems retaining your talent as you get better. With few long-term commitments and decent prospects near the majors, but not much talent below them, this could be a decent challenge. The team is also in a win-now mode, so the owners will probably not accept you selling off everything for the rebuild. This wouldn't be my ideal candidate for a rebuild due to the high-end talent near the majors. It seems like the Marlins are always in a rebuild. I'd like to take this time to apologize to all Marlins fans for having to go through four rebuilds in about 20 years. And this time, they really got rid of almost anything with talent. At this point, the only proven talent on this roster is Kyle Baraclow, JT Realmuto, and Justin Bohr. Lewis Brinson needs time to prove he's ready and may need a little more seasoning before he can contribute on offense. Speaking of Brinson, he's about the only prospect of note they have. They do have Monte Harrison at 83 as well, but this system is ranked as 25th in the majors. It's not very deep or very talented near the top end, and they sold off almost anything of value in the offseason for essentially nothing outside of Brinson and Starlin Castro. This means you don't get to try to get more back for those players yourself, and they didn't do you any favors with starting the rebuild. Despite how bad this roster looks, the team actually did okay in 2017, so you don't get to draft until 13th in the first round. They also don't have any supplemental picks either. It'll be hard to flip anything other than those three players for prospects, and even Bohr and Baraclo are only only going to get you so much. As for ownership, Bruce Sherman is the new owner, and we don't actually know too much about them going into the season. He does have demanding for a patience level, but everything else is pretty much in the middle. I think the Marlins are a decent pick to try and build a contender if you don't mind having an awful team. This is probably the worst 25-man roster we've looked at. You should get pretty good picks in 2019 and 2020 if you want to have the chance to draft and develop your own players, but they never really carry a huge payroll even when they're winning. So I don't really like any of these teams for a rebuild other than the Royals, and I'm biased there. I don't just want to play the Royals because they're my favorite team, but to me they feel like the team with the best combination of low long-term commitments and opportunities to get players into the farm. It's hard to turn down those four draft picks. I'm not going to go with the Royals because I feel like I will get too attached to the players I like outside the game. Instead, I'm going to go with the Rangers for this rebuild. While I won't have the chance to flood the system with prospects, it'll mean I have to take a longer time on the rebuild and be more deliberate in my picks. Next time we'll get into looking over the team in more detail and actually taking a look at our plan. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you think I'm wrong or right.
or you just want to say hi. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.